If there's one aspect of riding that I love more than any other, it's touring. If I had to, I'd give up the track, but taking away touring, it's this perfect metaphor for freedom. To most, freedom is just this abstract idea that relates to control, but that's not freedom, that's independence. Freedom is riding through the world with no thought any moment exists beyond the one we are living in. So while Ewan and Charlie popularized the idea of motorcycle touring to a world of new riders, they also implied that you need to have a massive adventure bike. Now I've toured on every kind of bike there is, including small displacement sport bikes. That means you can tour on the bike you have right now. Like this dude we met on the road, he was riding his GZ250 from Florida to Alaska. So if you haven't loaded up your bike and ventured out to explore the world around you, it's, it's time. This summer, you need to. And here are some of the things I've learned along the way that make the experience that much better. We will be far away from home and we have no idea where the next motorcycle shop will be. Before heading off, make sure our bike is good to go. Install fresh tires, change the oil, make sure the brake pads are good, lube the chain and wax the paint. And never, I mean never, head out on half-worn tires. Finding tires on the road sucks. You'll pay a small fortune for a tire that you'd never buy at home. If you have a bike with a chain, and a lot of us do, bring what you need to take care of it. I give my chain a light spritz of, of lube at the end of every day of riding. The toolkit our bike came with might be good enough, but probably not. We need to be prepared to deal with any bit of routine maintenance, including removing wheels. This is my tool roll with actual real tools. I even carry the special sockets to remove the Ducati axle nuts. And a flat tire kit lives in the bottom of a bag. And always, always bring a tire pressure gauge. Now, one of the great frustrations of touring is managing tire pressure. Finding a gas station with an air pump can be a huge pain. Finding a gas station with a working pump is even harder. And when you do, assuming someone hasn't stolen the brass air chuck, if you're lucky, it's gonna require three quarters to get it started just long enough to inflate one tire. I love all these small portable tire inflators so much that I try to always carry one with me, even with the limited space we have available on a motorcycle. Now, Fantic has graciously sponsored this video, but he didn't really need to because I love their newest X8 mini compact battery powered tire inflator regardless. I mean, look at how small this thing is. It's perfect for motorcycles where packing space is limited. What I like to do is at the end of the day, after we're unpacked and the tires have cooled down, check the pressure. And if they need topped up, enter it in the desired air pressure, hit go and let it do its thing. Then charge it overnight so it's fully ready to go for the next days of riding. Now, say you do get a flat on the side of the road. This thing is small, but it's mighty. It'll push 150 PSI. So it'll inflate my 190 width rear tire on the Multistrada from dead flat to 41 PSI in about 14 minutes with one bar of charge remaining. On a single charge, it has no problem topping off several motorcycle tires. It has presets for cars, motorcycles, bicycles. It'll switch from PSI to bar. But I find that just entering the desired pressure is my preferred method. Now, because Fantic has so graciously decided to sponsor this video, they're gonna give us 25% off for the X8 tire inflator with discount code CCCODE15. So if you act before May 30th, you can pick up one for less than $60, which is a no brainer. So yeah, thank you Fantic for sponsoring this video and the generous discount. Additional details are in the description. It doesn't matter what the weather report says, you're gonna see face melting heat, bone crushing cold, and toad floating wet, probably in the same day, especially if you ride in the mountains. Sure, you don't need $1,000 in Gore-Tex, although it helps. Packing layers can make virtually any riding gear work in most every scenario. Thin fleece underlayers, and even these cheap water resistant outer layers can provide protection, not just from rain, but a nice barrier to the cold. And if you are on a budget, nothing we've ever tried comes close to a pair of Carhartts with D3O armor in the knees. Just be warned, there is such a thing as too cheap. I love peaked helmets, I, I love them. The bill or the peak or whatever helps shade the sun, it helps with flickering light through the trees, and it helps protect from overspray from oncoming traffic. You don't need one, but there's a reason why so many touring riders are rocking these things nowadays. 
Packing might be the biggest challenge. When I started, all I used was my army waterproof bag and two bungee cords in a crisscross pattern with an army towel for scratch protection. But one thing to remember is avoid overpacking. Touring is an awesome lesson in minimizing what you actually need and what you actually want. Bungee cords have now been replaced with rock straps, which hold better, are easier to use, and as we found out, can be used for emergency MacGyver repairs. It's also a good idea to pack your bike up the day before and go for a short ride around the neighborhood. This will reveal any flaws in your methodology. The last thing we want is to have something come loose and to fall into the rear wheel. And if you're totally new to this, start off with a weekend overnighter or two or, or three before taking on that two week trip to Alaska. Even though I'm never married to a single route, I begin my research months ahead of time. I buy maps and I start hitting up the subreddits asking for information to help find the route between here and there that includes the greatest number of canyons. I also research and tag motorcycle shops in the area I'm heading. If you ever find yourself out of cell service desperately looking for the nearest motorcycle shop, you'll love having the information already logged. A GPS is a necessity. It, it allows me to simply follow the purple line. The route has already been planned and I can enjoy looking around instead of constantly looking for highway numbers and intersections. The GPS is my favorite invention of the modern era for this simple reason. Follow the purple line. It is the way, the truth, and the light. It knows all things and it provides all things. Praise be to the purple line. Fortunately, you don't need to buy a $1,000 Garmin Zumo anymore. Any cell phone with downloaded Google Maps used with a quad lock is more than adequate for navigational needs. I mean, I still favor the Garmin because it works with gloves and is more robust than a cell phone. Mid-trip route replanning does happen, so I always bring a small laptop. I bought this one refurbished for a couple hundred dollars and I loaded it up with Garmin navigational software. It's small enough to slip in anywhere and if it gets broken or damaged, I'm not out but a couple hundred bucks. You're probably not a morning person. Well, you probably are, but modern society wants us all to be night owls. But to get the most out of motorcycle touring, we want to rise and fall with the sun. Riding in the dark, especially unfamiliar roads, especially with wildlife, is way more risk than we want to take on. Plan to be done for the day before it gets dark. Part of why all of us on Team Canyon Chasers rock the tinted visor is as one more reminder to be done and off the bike before we have to switch to the clear visor. The best riding of the day is just as the sun is coming up and the world is calm and quiet. These are the magical moments. Don't, don't sleep through them. Get up and ride for an hour before breakfast. You'll be able to cover more ground with less risk and less fatigue. We also recommend not trying to log a specific amount of distance in a day. Think in terms of saddle time. Six hours in the saddle, even when I'm really fit, is my personal limit to how much I'm riding that day. And mistakes happen when we are tired. In fact, data shows that fatigue is just as dangerous as alcohol when it comes to impairing our ability. This, this is the hardest part for so many people. Making reservations is the quickest way to ruin a trip. It prevents us from changing directions, stopping when we're tired. Basically, they stop us from living in the moment. Years ago, we let someone else make reservations because they were super anxious about finding lodging. But as it turned out, the first four days of that road trip turned into an absolute slog. The roads were more technical than we expected. We had a few minor maintenance issues and the distances between gas stations were bigger than the gas tank. So yeah, it was taking us a lot longer to get anywhere. We ended up riding 12 to 14 hours in a day, long past sunset, because we have reservations. Yet every day when we were all tired, we'd roll past the cutest little motel you'd ever seen with a glowing vacancy sign and a charming little pub across the street. But we have reservations. And we'd soldier on. It was miserable. And that ride has been immortalized as the death march in the annals of Cannon Chasers history. The lesson here is, yeah, sometimes we may be heading into an area where lodging may be harder to find. This is when we stop midday and make reservations for that evening, when we have a better idea of how things are going. But the rest of the time, just let the day come to you. In 30 years of this, we've never been unable to find a place to sleep. Now, granted, not every place is going to be a gem, but that's part of the story, right? It's not an adventure until something goes wrong and something will go wrong. The 
The rough experiences make for the best stories. This doesn't mean eat gas station sushi in Idaho, but when we get a flat, the weather turns soggy, or the mountains catch on fire, or someone's bike done blowed up, we have to be able to step back and think about how our future self is going to have the best story at the cocktail party. Listen, most people travel wrong. They travel focused on a destination or an agenda. The destination is just the catalyst. Life happens on the road. These arteries of travel vein their way through every town and every community, transporting food and people and stories. Interact with the locals. They are eager to talk to us because the evidence of our journey is on our sun-faded riding gear and our bike with layers of dust and bugs. Those perfect moments when it feels like the world has been lit with candles just for me have all been discovered when an eager local excitedly shared a favorite road or what they love about where they live. They also can offer invaluable information about current conditions. That bridge was washed out two years ago. That road is being repaved. Go this way instead of that. You're gonna to wanna to take the Comox Ferry, but that would be stupid. Actual advice from a local, and he was right, by the way. The best way to enjoy motorcycle travel is to open ourselves up to the unexpected, the unplanned, the surprises, what we don't know or understand, and to be willing to listen and learn and feel it all. Abandon the plan and go a whole new direction. The forecast calls for rain for the next week to the west. Let's go east instead. Anybody can go to a resort and make people do everything for them. But if we want to find adventure, if we want to experience life, a motorcycle is an amazing way to go looking for it. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Ride on and ride well.